In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about what a research question is, good characteristics of a research question, and then how you can work on generating a research question and narrowing it down to have a really good research question for your next study. So a research question is really just a question that's going to guide a project, a study. It could even be as big as a whole research program or as small as a single component of a study. It's just a curiosity question that is aiming to understand something and actually able to understand it through research. A lot of times a research question is what initiates and guides a study. So whenever you come up with a research question, that's kind of the first step to actually developing your study. And then your research question is going to be what guides your study throughout to make sure that you're staying on task and you're not going off in a lot of different directions to where you never actually finish your study. So examples of good research questions can be things like what genetic factors influence the risk of obesity, things like how does job stress affect mental health, and even something like how does wire thickness affect resistance. It's just general questions about the way that things are working. So what are some good characteristics of a research question? The first characteristics is that it needs to be specific. So it should be able to be answerable within the appropriate context. So for example, if you're creating a research question for an entire grant or for an entire research program, it's going to be much less specific than if you're creating a research question for a single study, because an entire research program may be decades long versus a grant is probably five years long versus a single study may only be six months to a year long. And so if you're not specific enough, you won't be able to fully answer that question in the given time. It's the next thing is it should be feasible. So it should be practical to investigate this within the given time, resources, and knowledge available. So if you have a research question and you go to investigate it and you're like, I don't even know how we would measure these five things that are a part of this research question, then that research question isn't feasible. You should go and measure these five, or figure out ways to measure these five things first, and then you can then be able to research that question where you already need to have those methods available. It should also be appropriately complex. So if it's really, really simple, first of all, if there's a good chance that it's already been done before, and two, it's not going to have enough to be able to work for something like a research study. So you want it to be complex enough to allow for a detailed or exploration of the question in the appropriate context. So again, if you have a whole research program, you're gonna have a fairly complex question with probably a lot of different factors going in. If you're gonna have a study, you're going to have a complex question. You're probably going to have multiple factors going into it, but not near as much as a whole research program. You also want it to be a novel question. So this means that it hasn't been done before. And as you integrate in complexity and specificity, that those are really your two tools to get to more and more novel questions. So for example, if I had the research question of how does job stress affect mental health, that's really broad. And I could probably find a lot of different studies that can answer something about that question, which means that that question in general is not novel. But if I bring it really, really, really specific and say, how does feeling like you're being micromanaged at work affect your depression scores in working moms, right? Like now that's super specific and there's probably less studies, if any studies that specifically hone in on that. And then I can add in complexity and specificity into that question um, as, as I need more novelty into it if things have already been done in that field. So what you'll find is if you come into a field at really the infancy of it, you can really work with less complex, less specific questions. Whereas you come in later on, you have to get more and more specific because already all the less specific stuff has already been done. And then the final component, and this is something that a lot of people miss out on, is it needs to be significant, which means that it's the, it, the answer to the question should make an impact on your field and or society at large. And so if you go and study a question and the reality is no one really cares about the answer of that question, it's going to be hard to get funding. It's going to be hard to get it published and it's going to make it more difficult to be able to move your research forward. So you, when you have a question, you wanna be able to clearly state why the answer to this question has a major impact on the field.
Three pitfalls that you can easily fall into whenever creating a, a research question is the first is asking yes and no questions. So this limits your exploration. This is something like, does watching TV increase depression risk? Your answer is really only yes or no. We could ask it something like, to what effect does watching TV or what recreation activities increase depression risk? Those are different ways to be able to answer that, but that's one component of the larger answer. The other pitfall you want to avoid is asking leading questions. So this can potentially bias the research. And if you hear the, the questions that are examples, you're probably going to be like, oh, yeah, that's super obvious that I wouldn't do that. But you also want to look into ways that you might be doing it in a little bit more subtle ways. So questions like, wouldn't renewable energy sources have a more positive impact on the environment? That biases my question where my question should be is how does renewable energy sources impact the environment? That way I'm not biased to only looking at potential positive impacts and not negative impacts. The third pitfall is having overly broad questions. And what happens here is you get really overstretched studies. You tend to have longer times to completion and maybe never completing a study. And this can be really easy to get distracted and go off in a lot of different routes. And then when you try and write the paper, you're writing too much because there's so many different ways that you're trying to attack it. So questions like these could be, what are the effects of diet on health? Again, there's so many different diets and there's so many different health metrics that you're looking at, different types of health that you could look at. And so you want to narrow it down so that you are specific enough to make it clear what you are actually trying to study. So how would you narrow a research question? So let's take that last research question I had. What are the effects of diet on health? The first question, the first way you can do it is pull the keywords down. What are the effects of diet on health? My main two keywords are diet and health. And so I can say basically what diet and what health. So what diet means, what are the specific things within a diet that I'm looking at? And what health could mean, what type of health am I looking at? But then I would even pull it down further and say like, what are the specific health measurements I wanna look at? So let's say my diet, I wanna look at a low carb diet and what health measurements I wanna look at BMI and hypertension. So now my question becomes, how does a low carb diet affect BMI and hypertension? And what we might find is there's a lot of research on this already. And so we can say, okay, what are some other variables that are common within a study that I might need to pick out? So this could be things like sample, intervention, time frame, even field specific variables. So in this question, I could say like my sample is age 20 to 30 year old women. My time frame is having a low carb diet for 12 weeks. So that's my intervention time frame and field specific variables. Something that I might want to ask is exercise intervention. So specifically, we aren't going to have them exercise for the 12 weeks and just look at the diet's effects on BMI and hypertension. So then my question becomes, how does a 12 week low carb diet affect BMI and hypertension in women aged 20 to 30 without exercise intervention? So this is now a far more novel and far more specific question that I can then go and investigate. Has anyone done this before? And is this feasible to do? What are the methods I need to have in order to measure BMI, to measure hypertension, and to actually administer the intervention of a 12 week low carb diet and without exercise and in intervention. We need to ask the questions, could this even be approved by an IRB board? If you're using it on animals, can this be approved by the animal ethics boards that you're using like IACUC? And so that's where you get into the feasibility of it. So I really hope that this helps you be able to understand what a research question is and how to create them and how to create narrow, specific, novel, and complex research questions to guide your next study. If you're getting started in your study, make sure that you download my 30-day research jumpstart guide. If you want more videos like these and even my courses available, check out my Research Mastery Academy. It is my kind of complete collection of all of my content on research. And so if you're struggling, if you want guidance from me, I would definitely check that out. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.